This episode is brought to you by the Slash and Cast Podcast Network. Learn more at slashandcast.net. Weird Al Yankovic, Weird Dream Sequences, and Michael Myers finally speaks. We're talking about Halloween 2, and it was horrifying. Welcome to So Horrified, the show where we talk about scary movies that are horrifying for all the wrong reasons. We're your hosts, Sadie. And Matt. And this week, we're talking about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Mr. Zombie to you. From 2009. Mr. Zombie, okay. (laughs) Zombie. I hope we've done enough in our social media and in... Referring to this in like other episodes that everybody knows it was the Rob Zombie's Halloween, right? Two, not, the, not like, not the like nineteen eighty two or eighty one whatever Halloween two version. Yeah. Mm. If you watch that one, this show is not going to make any sense because <laughs> we're talking about a different one. But before we dive into that, let how about we talk about something good? How about it? So why don't you go first? Tell me what you've been watching. Okay. Um, I was pretty excited. For and so far not disappointed by the um, the haunting of Bly Manor. Yeah. I really liked the Hill House one when it came out, so I've been so waiting good. for this one, and we've been watching it. We have not finished it yet, Mm-mm. but it's been good so far. It's not as outright scary, I think, as the first one, but it's very good. It's got a good story. It's keeping me guessing a lot. Right. It's very creepy and... Like, builds up the anticipation and anxiety of it very well, which was something Hill House also did very well. But yeah, they would sometimes, Hill House would sometimes get you with like the pop up scares and stuff like that occasionally. It still was mostly that slow, like, just dread. And yes, yes, that, and it just, ah, yeah, they're really, the director, Mike Flanagan, I believe was his name, is really good at doing that. Of doing that, just the building that an- anxiety until you're like, oh my god, I can't take it anymore. Just change the shot, and then he goes like two minutes longer. So this it just one, really freaks you out. Yeah, they also continue the tradition of creepy ghosties like in the background of yeah. long shots that just kind of float by and scare the yeah, shit. Yeah, to out of really you. look for them. Yeah. yeah. So it's good if you haven't watched it, check it out. Yeah, I really like it. I think it's really well done. For me, I was watching, it's not really one thing. It's not like a television series technically, but um, it's the Bloomhouse put out four new original movies that they've produced on Amazon Prime Video. And two of them came out earlier in the month, and then the other two just came out recently. Um, And they're pretty decent. They're pretty decent little, like, you know, for... Essentially, like a, I was going to say like a made for TV movie, but actually, that's what I used to think about like Netflix movies. And now you have like Martin Scorsese and stuff directing. They're not TV movies anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that's gone away. But, but yeah, I think like, and I feel like they're, they're pretty well done and stuff. And well, and they had done those ones on Hulu, the Into yeah. the Dark movies that there was one a month. I think they did two years worth of those. Yeah, they did. And so I don't know if those are going away now that they're doing these on Amazon or if they're just doing both things. I feel like they're going away because I don't feel like I've seen any new movies from that series in the past month or two. But I also could be wrong. But usually, like right around that, the first of the month or whatever, you start seeing ads for it. And I haven't seen any of those in a while. I feel like they did one about summer or getting ready to go back to school a couple months ago and then that's it but i don't know um oh but anyway they were pretty good so you know if you're looking for some some spooks fun halloween things oh i also watched um season two of the purge um the tv show the purge and now like i don't know if a ton of people watch that or not i mean i'm guessing enough that they got a second season because I haven't really ever heard or seen anyone talking about the TV show, but I really like it. I really liked season one, and I really liked season two was really well done as well. And they have like good casts and 
And it really like, I don't know, it makes you tense, but it also has like strong, important messages and is very philosophical, like pondering morality and humanity and government's role in all of that. And it's um, been canceled. Are you serious? I don't know. Why? What is wrong with you? Why do you want to see me sad? Just dropped really. (laughs) Well, I was like, that's that's a horrible thing to say while I'm in the middle of talking about how much I enjoyed it. But season two just recently came out on Hulu. I mean, I know it's on USA, so I'm it played throughout the year. I just don't watch things until they're all complete, and we don't have cable, so I don't watch get USA anyway. But yeah, so I just watched that on um, Hulu. It was good. So I guess now we could get to the stuff we're actually supposed to be talking about. Yeah. (laughs) Do you want to give us a synopsis for this movie? So the synopsis is a year after narrowly escaping death at the hands of Michael Myers, Lori Strode is at a breaking point, pushed to the edge by Dr. Loomis's revelation that she's Michael's sister. Little does she know the unstoppable killer is back in Haddonfield and driven by visions of their dead mother. He is determined to bring about a bloody family reunion. Cool beans, cool beans. <laughs> <laughs> Not cool beans. A lot of people die. I guess I should start by saying I I believe I've seen Rob Zombie's Halloween, like first Halloween movie, Halloween 2007 or whatever, one time. I've I believe. seen it at least a couple times, I think. Okay. I thought it was pretty good. Not great. Yeah. Um, so I have no thoughts on that, but, um, but I do like wish that I had watched it right before since it picks up like right after. And I'm not sure there are some things that it's like, it might've been explained in the first movie, or is it just, they didn't explain this at all. And it's like, I don't know. All you, all you really need to know from the first one is that their parents abused the shit out of them. And Michael Myers got sent to like a, a sanitarium type thing when he was a boy and ended up growing up big and strong <laughs> and breaking out and took his Flintstone vitamins trying to find Lori who is Lori now she was his sister boo mm-hmm. back in the day and uh he tries to find her and kill her and she kills him or something oh well, okay I was like but wait she doesn't no, the, the final shot of the first one is her like on top of him with a gun in his right. face and shoots and the blood splatters all over her face and she screams and then it like cuts to credits which I have an interesting thing about that when we do rabbit hole interesting yes it is <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the judge of that <laughs> That makes me feel a little better, but yeah, because I, w- I wasn't sure how many of these things were explained in the first one from his and how many weren't. So. Yeah, well, and it's probably been at least, you know, 10 years since I've seen the first one. Right. And I had kind of forgotten that it had, he, it's like they want it to be like an origin story for right. Michael Myers. That's what I've heard. What Everything I've read about it is that like a lot of people don't like it because They don't want Mike Myers to have like they don't want to know the origin story of what made him, you know, like. Yeah, it's it's more scary if it's unknown. Right. And you don't know if he's some kind of superhuman thing. Right. Or if he's just a guy in a mask, which, yeah, it makes it feel a little more like criminal mindsy with that. So in towards the beginning, did you notice a pretty big cameo from. She was not, I don't believe, a big star yet then, but she's very well known now. Do you see Octavia Spencer? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. I don't think, I'd have to look at when, I'm trying to think of what her big, like, breakout thing was. I would say was. The help was probably that's what her I was big thinking, one, and that was, was definitely help. after this. Okay, that's what I thought. And her character is Nurse Daniels, but if you, like, I don't know if you noticed, but I got really excited because the other nurse called called her Octavia, and yes. she was like, well, and she's like, Octavia, or something like that, and that. I was like, oh, snap! Yeah, well, and uh, she was staffing yet another hospital that is empty at night. Yes, yes. Like, what is- Which, it turns out, it's not real, but- Right. Was still maddening when it happened. Because, yeah, they do that so much. Every scary movie hospital, if it's at nighttime, there's just no staff. And it's like, that's right. not how hospitals are. Right. They have a whole staff of people there all, all the, the time. time. Right. I mean, like, it's definitely 
quieter at night, but by no means is it ever quiet in a hospital. I've had to stay overnight a few times, no, and it's can't, no. You can't get stabbed fifteen times in the hallway, right? And, and no one comes notices, to check. right? No one is walking by or anything. There's no alarms going off for them to go check people. Yeah, no. But I geeked out over that. But the hospital thing, yeah. It bothered me while it was happening, although I will say, to me, that was the most exciting, not exciting, like exciting isn't the word for it, but maybe it's when I identified with the character the most <laughs> is like- Of Michael Myers? No, of of Lori, when she's got like the boot on her foot and the- thing around her wrist and she's just like lunging herself down the stairs I was just like cringing I was in so much pain for her like it just hurt me so so much when I broke my foot if anyone like even slightly brushed against it it would be like so much pain for at least the first week or two and then it started to not be as painful but yeah no she just lunged herself and so okay so is that actually just a dream like it did not yeah, happen just a dream a long fucking dream yes and that is, i'm sorry that is infuriating for that to be just a dream no, after I in my notes all i just put was it was all a dream fuck you <laughs> Yeah. But the part before that was not a dream of him escaping from the ambulance or whatever right. it was on so the way. Th- who, by the way, just we're five minutes in and they're talking about necrophilia. Yeah. And I was just like, what? I feel like Rob Zombie has this thing where he likes to make characters really hateable so that when they die, you're like excited that they die, I guess. I think that's definitely... Which, yeah, this guy is just like, well, let's get some hot corpses in here so I can stick my yeah, dirty dick in. Yeah, like, like oh, gross, it's no. so gross. Yeah, super. Yeah, and that makes sense. Well, and I have to say, like, for even talking about, like, a little note or whatever, I'm not a big Rob Zombie fan. <laughs> I'm not a big necrophilia fan. <laughs> oh, God, no. Okay, so I'm not one of those either. Put, put a pin <laughs> But um, no, I'm not a huge Rob Zombie fan. Like, I mean, I appreciate him and I know that he's like an important figure in the horror genre, but like that's not my particular favorite type of horror. Dirty snuff film horror. Right. Like just the how many ways can we kill people in the grossest way? Like I also like I watched the first Hostel movie and that was enough for me. I didn't watch any of the others. I don't like to watch a lot of movies where it's their main objective or the thing that they seem to think is most horrifying or whatever is just the goriness of it and the grossness. I like... The, you know, like I was talking about with the Purge TV show of that, uh, or not the Purge, the, um, the Manor one. What is it? Crap. Bly Manor. Bly Manor. My God. Just how much they play with that anticipation thing, you know? But, and so I just wanted to say that going into this because. Yeah. I, I enjoyed, I like the Devil's Rejects. And then I feel like any other movie of his that I've seen, I didn't like quite as much. Mm. Because they're all just that in like slightly different settings. Right. Yeah. He's, you know, he's got his very particular style. And he uses the same actors a lot. And yeah, it just looks like everybody, like somebody threw a fistful of dirt on their face right before they (laughs) shot the scene, every scene. And yeah. So like, I get it. I understand what his stick is, but I'm like, you like, it's not my favorite. Right. Right. Um, So I just want to. I feel like I need to confess that because we're talking about a Rob Zombie movie. And I usually I dislike when a reviewer starts like there was one recently is like, well, I hate horror, but I'm going to review this horror thing. I've never seen any of the other ones. Of course, you're going to hate it. (laughs) So I am a little bit, but I'm going to try to put my I mean, and again, I don't hate him. It's just not my style. (laughs) I, on the other hand, hate him. (laughs) It stole my woman. <laughs> uh, what now? I found another one. Anyway, so 
I guess we should talk. Let's get back to this specific movie. But yeah, I was very angry that this whole hospital scene when I was like, I mean, it made sense in a way because I also was very frustrated with that hospital scene of, yeah, like, why is no one there? Even if it was an empty hospital at night, I know you think the killer's dead, but maybe still have a cop or someone posted outside. You know, she was a victim of attempted murder. It is a very long scene for then her to wake up and then it just be a nightmare. Yeah. Well, and that hits at what is kind of at the heart of this movie that I had the biggest problem with is all the fucking dreams and like weird, like psychedelic vision sequences and the mom with the white horse. And like, I I didn't like or need or want any of that. Right. Yeah, it was was a lot of it. There was a lot of it. And it was very, it was very strange. (laughs) They put the thing at the beginning of the movie, like a excerpt from a dream analysis textbook or something about seeing a white horse in your dream yeah, represents something about innocence unbridled rage or something oh is, is that what it said, said? i thought yeah. it said innocence it never said mind like pure emotion like joy or rage or oh, whatever. okay and so he keeps seeing her in all white with this white horse and like the kid version of himself and they're like his little jiminy cricket that tell him mm-hmm. to murder yeah, that was very bizarre, especially because he'd been murdering fine without them before. Yeah, like, he'd, and l- unless this is just he's always been seeing them. And, and this, this is, is the, the first, first time the we audience see it. gets to see it. Right. Yeah. yeah, I definitely did not really like those either. I also did not really like Lori. Like, now, mm. sorry, another disclaimer here. We watched the director's cut version, which I found out when reading stuff for a rabbit hole is not the same, obviously, as the theatrical release, but I don't know how much they differ other than having completely different endings. So hopefully we all watch the same thing. Yes, but who knows? But yeah, so I don't know how different it might have been for the theatrical one, but Lori was just really unlikable in most of it she just yells at everyone like you understand that she's been through a horrible trauma and that she's trying to get better right but she still just lashes out at everyone every time and it gets old fast right and she has a charles manson poster on her wall like (laughs) first of all i think it's weird when people idolize serial killers anyway like I find that serial killer and true crime stuff fascinating, but I don't want a picture of Ted Bundy on my wall. Like, I don't he think was a they're. Man. What are you talking about? I don't think they're like amazing individuals to look up to. They're awful. They're horrible. They're evil. I thought that was really weird. So, a victim of a serial killer has. And Charles Manson on her wall, right? And that just seemed that, and like Annie, who I guess is her girlfriend. They're just they were best friends, and she was a another victim of the first movie that survived. Are you sure you're not missing anything? <laughs> but I swear that they said like someone said something about girlfriend problems or maybe they just said relationship i don't know and she kept you know she would call her baby all the time and stuff like that yeah, and so I don't know, maybe if it was it, they didn't have like a prominent relationship other right because it wasn't talked about yeah that displayed. much yeah i mean i guess you don't have to display a relationship but yeah you do <laughs> but what annie said that I was like cheering behind, which I mean, I get everyone trauma affects everybody differently. And the fact that they both went through a very similar trauma doesn't mean they're going to heal the same way. But like Lori's sitting there yelling at everyone. And Annie's like, you know, I went through it, too. <laughs> like She's like, it's not the same. And it's like, it's kind of the same. Because at that point, right. she doesn't even know that it's her brother yet. Right. But they, she literally just thinks they went through this. Some strange fucking dude busted in tried, and tried to, to kill, kill both of them. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Her injuries seemed even more severe. Like, yeah, her face is all fucked up. And, right. Yeah. But yeah, so I feel like I did, like I read that the theatrical version didn't have her yelling at people as much. 
I'm guessing because people were like, she's really like not likable. Yeah. Because she, um, at least in the director's cut, she's just yelling at everybody. Yeah, she yells at her friend. She yells at her therapist constantly. She yells at the sheriff guy. Like, everybody. Right. Which, again, I get being angry in, as a trauma response, was, but like... The only person she was nice to was jump to conclusions matt guy that was the security guard in her dream yes yes <laughs> these different conclusions you jump to him jump to him i don't know that that got to me too like the whole time and i was just i don't know she the way she was screaming at her therapist i was just like it looked like she was like gonna hit her or something. I was like, I'm sorry. The fact that her therapist does not immediately call and like, I mean, I know committing someone against their will is not like, I'm not saying anyone who has a mental illness needs to, you know, but um, she definitely seemed like she was a d- danger and a threat to herself and to other people. Yeah. Yeah, she, she had a thread had snapped at some point, and yeah, the doctor right. should have been a little more proactive and just On not that. let her walk out of the office after right. berating her and screaming at her and shit. Right. It just made her very unlikable, and she was very just mean. I guess we covered that, but I'm just still annoyed by it. Because I'm used to Lori being very likable. Like, I don't know. One of the things I've liked with the Halloween movies is that more often than not, Laurie Strode has been just a character I really like. And I feel like Jamie Curtis played her so well. So for Laurie to be so unlikable to me just really made me mad. It's like if someone redid Alien, which would be annoying enough, and then made Ripley. Just an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so the movie has like an A plot, a B plot, and a C plot of Laurie being mean to everybody michael myers just like killing his way to her by slashing up random like rednecks and shit that he comes across along the way right and malcolm mcdowell as dr loomis like trying to sell his book and also being an asshole to everyone that he comes across right it's like everybody there's no one that you want aside from like annie and the sheriff guy fuck everybody in this movie right i don't like any of them I don't like the, the Dave Grohl bouncer guy that gets murdered. I don't like <laughs> yeah, I don't. There were. Yeah, I had a huge issue with that, too, is that most of the characters were unlikable. Yeah, they show up, they say something gross or like offensive or nasty. So as soon as he cuts them up and shit, you're like, yeah, get them fuckers. But like, are we supposed to like, are, am I supposed to root for Michael Myers in this? Right. Movie? I don't want that. Yeah. Which I, and, and I mean, I didn't really like, no, I still want him to be stopped too. Right. I, because I understand that his childhood sucked, but like, yeah, you, don't you can't get to just go around, around just killing people. Rednecks and, and titty bar owners. But it definitely <laughs> gave a feeling of like, you want to, be more attached to Michael Myers. But it's like, isn't that a big thing with slasher films is that you don't really know the, Yeah, they try know, to like, humanize him like too much and it's uh, that's not the changes that I wanted made to the Halloween right. franchise if you're going to reimagine it in some way. Yeah. It's, it's not, yeah, make me like the killer more. Right, exactly. Like, <laughs> no, no. I mean, I I always find it interesting to find out the psychology behind certain things, if there is, you know, where there is some. But yeah, no, I don't want the goal. And I don't know that that was his goal, but it definitely seemed like, because Michael, it's not like he was going and getting most of the characters you like. He, It seemed, at least at the beginning, like, oh, he killed these people because they were assholes to him, but then he grabs this girl, like, you know, and it's just, no, no. Well, he really does not like people fucking. Well, yes, so we do know if that. he sees that, he's going to end both people involved. Well, yes, that's not what I meant, but yes, I meant the girl who had, like, didn't want to leave him after the guys beat him up or whatever, or oh, thought yeah. they beat him up. Yeah. But no, the whole thing was just... 
bothersome. Were were you as excited as I was when Weird Al showed up? No, I was confused. I was like, of all people, why Weird Al? Like, that just seems like a really weird cameo. <laughs> Rob doesn't have a very deep playbook for celebrity cameos. I, <laughs> He's like, like, Al, you want to be in this? It's like, I mean, I love Weird Al. I think I, it's I cool. I want him to be in every scene for the rest <laughs> right? of the movie after he showed up. <laughs> like, please let him be the one that kills Michael Myers at the end. <laughs> No, like I I like Weird Al, uh, but it just seemed like such a weird random celebrity. A very odd cameo. Right. He was funny. Yeah, he was funny. Him. He made, he made Malcolm burns. McDowell angry. Yes. Dr. Loomis. Yeah. So, you know, in that way it worked, but yeah, it's it was odd. Yeah. It was odd. And really that's the only memorable part of Dr. Loomis's whole plot to me. Like, I remember him going from, like, press event to press event to talk about the book, and everybody hates him everywhere he goes. And then he shows up at the end and is like, I can help, and gets killed. I remember more. But, (laughs) I mean, that's basically all there was to it if you were talking about major plot points. I just remember scenes, of more scenes of it. But the end was the only time where he seemed somewhat redeemable but even then you don't know like is he he really doing this for the publicity or does he really feel like he's created this i don't know monster so to speak and feel responsible in some way or both probably right oh some of the phrases they had were great i have two written down that i really liked the best um there was one that was too coolio for schoolio and i (laughs) laughed out loud that was amazing that has you written all over it. i know right yes i thought that was hilarious um and then there was another that i was like but now i can't remember what scene this is from but they said chet the bringer of death oh oh i know what it was at the book signing for dr loomis um the guy comes up and um he goes over and he's like can you make it out to chet no no make it out to chet the bringer of death and that was another part where i laughed out loud i thought that was hilarious because i was like i don't know why i was just like that's great (laughs) (laughs) you have weird things that you like i know i know i do So I thought with all of the like supernatural kind of uh, scenes that they had with the dreams and the white horse and all of that, that they were going to try to offer up some sort of explanation to why the fuck he is so strong and so unkillable. And they didn't didn't do that. And it's like, if you're going to give me backstory, that's what I want to know. Right. Is how is he able to do so much of this stuff? Like at the end of the first movie, he gets shot point blank in the face and then stuffed in an ambulance that crashes enough to like basically kill the two people that were in the ambulance besides Mm -hmm. him. And he just gets out and walks away and is like, he's flipping cars at the end of the movie. Like, yeah. He flips one over a hill. Like, uh, no. Right. How is not, it that your sister that. has absolutely like no superhuman skills at all? And you. She's a super bitch. <laughs> hey, that's so bad. Well, and. I still don't really understand. I feel like it was not well explained why she's having flashes where like there was the one where she was having flashes of her like killing a- like um, Annie. Yeah. And like she seems she like has like this shared hallucination with him. Yeah, Because she was imagining that she was being held down at some point by the little boy and she right. was actually holding her down like they they have this. She's uh, kind of psi sensitive to the subtle energies. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm going to help that term take off. And uh, <laughs> she, yeah, but she has like a connection to him of some yeah. kind, but not in the, in the superpower department. Right. And one that apparently wasn't present before until recently, like until she kind of finds out that she's his sister and then she's like oh no oh yeah i guess we do have a mental link yeah but then in the end just to skip to the end and spoilers if you have not seen the director's cut version you may want to watch that or just listen to us spoil it whichever Lori dies in the theatrical version no in this one did she well okay so there's kind of i guess debate but um rob zombie has said that yes that was his intention was for her to die 
because they show her in the hospital room, but the I guess hospital that's why room. They made her so not likable. Maybe. So, but then, like, make her likable, and then people will care Be that sad she sad that she, yeah. Or, like, yeah, like, they left it, like, it seemed kind of ambiguous because she's in that hospital room, but the hospital room seemed very not a real hospital room. And it was like 90 feet long. Very like dreamlike. And so I don't know if that's supposed to be like where she went after she died or just a hallucination as she's dying. But Rob Zombie has said that, yes, that was his intention is that she and that's I guess in the theatrical version, it sounded like from what I read and I could be wrong. Don't like skewer me if I'm wrong that I guess Lori, I don't know if she gets still gets shot but not like it doesn't look like she dies or anything and but in the director's one yeah she gets like it looks like they shoot her like in the yeah like kind of forgotten the ending already because it's been a few days since i watched it yeah she gets shot a lot and she falls down on top of loomis and and michael myers or whatever supposed to be dead i think so because i I know that they had planned a third one and then this one didn't do so hot and so the third one didn't ever happen but I wonder what the fuck he was going to do season of the witch again <laughs> and not have Michael Myers in it. Well, I have some theories or, and some information I know that will be shared in the rabbit hole. Ooh. Insider information. I'm just kidding. It's not really insider, but <laughs> I'm not like the only person who has this information. You know, I found it quite easily on the internet, but yeah, like, cause I was wondering what that last shot, I was like, like, what the fuck does it mean of the, is she supposed to be that, like, she's turning into him? Or is it like she's dead? Because this doesn't look like a real hospital. This doesn't seem no, like, it, like, it yeah. seems like a hallway that stretches out forever or what, you know, maybe it didn't, but you know, so that seemed iffy. But then also I was like, but then why would, why would it be a hospital? Why would that be weird? Like, Second only to the mystery of why they decided to introduce the guy from Coach, like, two-thirds of the way into the movie as, a, as another police officer. Oh, yeah. Just yes. Up and he's like, I'll help you. It's like, yes. Where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> I forgot he was in Coach for a minute because I was thinking of him as Marshall Erickson's dad. Yes. <laughs> Or from how I met your mother. SpongeBob. <laughs> yeah, um, that's true. I guess probably Patrick from SpongeBob and Coach were bigger roles for him than Marshall's dad, who shows up <laughs> occasionally. But that's what I remember him most from. But um, yeah, that was weird. And it took me out because I was just like, "What? Why is he here? <laughs> Why right. has he not been here yet?" I don't know. There were so many. Things that did not make sense, which is why I was like, if I watched the first one, would this help? But it sounds like watching the first one right beforehand would not have made those things make more sense because those were not present in the first one. Well, and I will tell you, a lot of the reviews, uh, something that pissed a lot of people off was that they showed his whole face. Yep. And made him talk, even though the only thing he said was, die. Oh, right. Which also was not apparently in the theatrical release. Oh, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That's something that Rob Zombie had to fight for. I yes. to go die. Apparently is that he re- but like a lot of people were like no, Michael Myers doesn't speak. Like, that's the whole thing. Well, and they, he had him grunting and groaning a lot throughout the movie. Like, uh, when yeah. he was stomping the Dave Grohl guy's face, he was like, rrr, rrr. and then right. when he was chasing Annie through the house, he was grunting and groaning at her, too. Yes. And so, yeah, by the time the end happened and he just, he gets his one line. Uh, it just, it, and I get the idea of like humanizing him a little bit, making, but then don't let him have supernatural like powers right and like i'm not you know like a halloween purist or anything like i don't hold these movies sacred or anything but like that's their whole thing right he wears this mask he's mysterious he doesn't speak and he like stalks and kills and whatever so like if if you wanted to make a movie about a guy whose parents were abusive to him and then he like puts a weird mask on but takes it off half the time just make a different movie right why like why is this your halloween movie if you wanted to change so much about what people have come to expect from halloween movies Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know it was bizarre i don't know for it to be like i think i would have been slightly more okay with it if they had either like humanized like 
And by humanized, like, I I don't even mean, like, relating to him. But, you know, yeah, especially, like, that's one of the things with slasher killers is they almost always wear masks and, like, even how they, you know, they're not talking a lot and stuff like that. And that just, it makes them have, like, these supernatural quality type things. The inhumanness of it is what makes it scary. Right. And, And, yeah. And so then to kind of humanize him but then you're like okay so is he like a demigod like what is this yeah why is he why can he still flip a car over with minimal right. effort yeah it's very weird that was that was a very odd choice i did however like the rocky horror picture show costumes they the girls wore to the party everybody at that party had like hollywood movie level budget costumes yeah they did except for all like the a high school costume party rave thing except for you know all the women who um on stage who were only given you know one eighth of a costume god just i wrote that on the i was like why are all why are there all these topless women just seemingly at this bar like that seems like a very (laughs) you know i'm gonna do a dance for all these like 19 year old kids yeah Oh, but funny thing. Also, um, the Wolfman kid, the Wolfy guy or whatever, is uh, that guy from the Goldbergs, the Andy, one of the JTP, the short one. I thought JTP? that was funny. JTP. We watch a lot of TV, babe. <laughs> <laughs> the references never end. <laughs> All right, so shall we move on to best and worst? We shall. Excellent. So, best and worst, if you don't know, it's where Matt scours the internet for the best reviews and the worst reviews he can find for whatever movie we're talking about. I'm like a little scrubbing bubble. What? Because I scoured the internet. <laughs> Why? They do the work so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Joe Dierte. Um, so we switch on and off each week of who does the best and who does the worst. So this week I have the best. Rotten Tomato gives this a critic score of 21%, an audience score of 45%, and it has an IMDb score of 4.9 stars out of 10. All right, so... Our first good review comes from Holden McGroin. <laughs> that's it's a joke, right? I mean, that's definitely I would a joke. Absolutely hope so. Holden McGroin. <laughs> Did you pick that just to make me say that? I didn't not pick it because of the name, <laughs> that's for sure. Oh my goodness. So I say he looks for the best and worst. He really just looks for what he thinks is funniest (laughs) from imdb says just finished watching the movie and all i can say is well done zombie you really have breathed new life into the series i have always been a fan of the series who isn't but we all have to admit it was on its way out when busta rhymes and tyra banks all but left it a joke excuse me Busta Rhymes was the best part of you that movie. Save your damn criticisms of Busta How Rhymes, you dare you, Holden McGroin, if that is your <laughs> real name. <laughs> I was a fan of Zombies remake of the original. My only criticism of that film was that it took too long setting up the backstory. I know many people who felt this way, but with the addition of the new movie, Zombie has gone above and beyond. The new movie jumps right into the action and never lets you go. Even at the very end, you are enthralled. Thank you, zombie, for being faithful to the storyline we all know and love. 10 out of 10. I mean, the main thing people hate is that he's not faithful to it. Right? Like, if you love it, love it because it's so different, not because it's what you expected, because it's not. Right. Like, that's the main critique that I've seen or complaint from I've seen from most people. All right. Elizabeth W. from Amazon said, Drag queen roommates really wanted to watch this. They loved it. I thought it was good. Four out of five. Like, the reviews some of these people write. <laughs> like love some of the details that people include in these. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with being a drag queen. 
But why but, is she yeah. talking about that? <laughs> like, it just, I don't think that's why they enjoyed this movie. Right. This I don't think it had anything movie. to do with it. That's why it took me a sec. I had to reread it because I was like, wait, what? Jacob John Taylor, IMDb, says, This is a follow-up to the Halloween remake from 2007. The Halloween remake is a pretty good movie, but this movie is better. The Halloween original from 1978 is a pretty good movie. This movie is better. The 1981 version of Halloween 2 is better. That is one of the scariest movies ever made. And it is impossible to top. The seventh Halloween movie, Halloween H2, uh, H2O, is also scarier than this movie. Wait, what? Okay. He's going through his rankings and he's going to um, hit everyone. Yeah, it just confused me the way he was going. Okay. Uh, they are a thousand times better than Halloween 3, Session of the Witch. <laughs> Season the of the therapy. Witch. <laughs> yeah. This is a great movie and Halloween 3, Session of the Witch, he says it again, is just crap. Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers is a pretty good movie. This one is better. The sixth Halloween movie, Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers, is a pretty good movie. This movie is better. This is 200 times better than Halloween Resurrection. This is a great movie, and Halloween Resurrection is just crap. This movie is very scary. It has great acting. It also has a great storyline. It also has great special effects. I do not know why people who liked the Halloween remake would have a problem with the violence in this movie. People who like this movie need to speak up. The truth be told, this is better than Halloween 2007. 10 out of 10. I want to go back and break apart his and figure out where his final rankings are. It sounds like the original Halloween 2 was the scariest movie ever made. And then they go down from there. Yeah, it sounds like he's saying the 1981 version of Halloween 2 is bet the best. But an H two O is better than this. But then it sounds like all this the is others are after the right. That's where I got confused. Is where he jumped and sandwiched in where this movie fell. All right. Well, those are all the good reviews I have for you. <laughs> Which means I have the pleasure of the bad reviews. Our first bad review this week comes to us from Nikki Bon from Roll Credits, who says. With its bizarre mix of torture porn and some ill-advised delving into the psyche of serial killer icon Michael Myers, it's a real horror for all the wrong reasons. Ah. Hey! (laughs) Interspersed with all this violence are bizarre scenes which try to get to the heart of why Michael is the way he is. An unnecessary and cloying psychological subplot that involves Michael having visions of white horses and his mother played by Sherry Moon Zombie. It would be overly cynical to suggest that this has been shoehorned into the plot to create a role for the director's wife, but this attempt at bringing some depth to the stalk and slash genre is ridiculous at best. One star. Our next and probably harshest review comes from Scott Weinberg of The Horror Show. He says... If you have a baby who loves to, say, take off his diaper and smear the walls with his own feces, it's not really the kid's fault. It's the fault of the parents who allow a small child with a poop fetish to run around unchecked, free to do whatever he likes to do with his diaper and his duty. And by this point, it's virtually impossible to blame Rob Zombie for the irredeemable refuse he calls his movies, because let's face it, someone gave this filth-obsessed infant another $25 million with which to create another crap-caked masterpiece. Damn. (laughs) Yeah, this guy was not impressed. And to those who looked at the final version of Zombies Halloween 2 and deemed it worthy of horror fan consumption, well, those guys are either monumentally clueless about what makes a good horror flick, or, much more likely, they knew they were just looking at a shit portrait and they didn't care. But that's enough of an analogy that Zombie himself would probably appreciate, if only for its simplistic grossness. Some horror films aim to challenge you by dishing out extreme and or graphic violence, and in many cases, often with the foreign horrors, the effect works like a charm. Zombie's approach, however, is not to focus on the tension, the dread, the gore, or the horror. Nope, he's just interested in the suffering. How an arbitrary character like a nurse who turns out to be a dream sequence nurse (laughs) must weep and beg and plead before being stabbed 15 times. How a young woman's dead body is framed like a Playboy pictorial. How there's not a pained expression, a confused sneer, or filthy grimace that Zombie won't linger on for 10 seconds longer than he needs to. This is not a shocking, incendiary, or brave horror making. This is a trip through the morgue with a freaky dude who likes to touch corpses, spout profanity, and giggle at the basest things imaginable. Grow the hell up, Rob. Wow. 
Yeah. <laughs> he's got some problems with Rob it. Zombie. <laughs> I do absolutely get what he's saying, though, about just focusing on the suffering part of all of it. Right. Like, it's just, yeah, I want to make these deaths all seem as painful as possible. But it's... Right. It's about people you don't care about, so I don't care that they're that painful, you know? Right, right. But that will do it for Best and Worst this week, which means it's time... For Sadie's Rabbit Hole. So I've got a little bit of trivia goes kind of into lots of different places. We've got some about Rob Zombie, about the movie, about some other Halloween movies. You know, I mean, like the Halloween franchise, not just movies. Not Hocus Pocus. No, not not like that. You know, it's funny because Rob Zombie gets so much hate for this movie as being like, oh, the studio just let him run and do whatever he wanted, which I mean, I get that he but he didn't want a sequel to happen in the first place. He said no to it. He said that. So that's why at the end of the first one, Michael Myers dies with her shooting him right in the head. So there, it, it's supposed to be unambiguous in the first exactly. one. It's supposed to be like he is definitely for sure dead. Um, and then when the studio came to him about doing a sequel, he was like, no, you know, um, but then and yet. Here we are. Well, because they said they were going to, you know, that they'd go forward without him. You know, they would get a different director or whatever. But he didn't want another director and writer to ruin his vision. Mm. <laughs> he said, if anybody's going to ruin my vision, it's going to be <laughs> Exactly. <me." laughs> yep. <laughs> exactly. And so part of what he'd hoped with killing off Lori at the end and Michael Myers again was that they wouldn't try to do a third movie, which they already had planned on trying to do, and he'd said no to. And then this movie did so poorly that... So one could even hypothesize that he was like, I'm making this thing go down. Yeah, I'm tanking it so there can't be another one. <laughs> one would... For 10 years. Oh. <laughs> yes. He ended up kind of, in a way, getting his wish that they didn't do a third one anyway. But yeah. Many fans and critics think, well, and they even said it in one of the reviews you read, theorize that the only reason Michael Myers hallucinates the vision of his mother and all that stuff was, yeah, so that Rob Zombie could keep his wife in it. <laughs> right. She, yeah, she's in every movie that he does. Right. And not anything else, really. So, like, Right. No, I've like, never seen really know, anything else. She's in a like a high demand actress, you know, like John Krasinski puts Emily Blunt in his movies, but she but she's have work amazing. Him. <laughs> yeah, like she's she's fine on her own. Right, she did a lot of work yeah, with, this before is she met him. Not one of those situations. <laughs> right, no, this is not the same. This is not the same thing. And so, and then there are people also who seem to think, or at least want, the hospital dream sequence in the beginning is believed by some to be like an homage to the original Halloween 2 because it takes place in a hospital. But Rob Zombie, who made the movie, denies this and says that um, he didn't even like the original sequels. <laughs> I just did this 20-minute dream sequence because I don't care. <laughs> exactly. I know, which just makes it more infuriating because if it was done as an homage, it's like, okay, it's still annoying that it went on for so long, but at least that's understandable. I think it's people just trying to make it make sense because the fact that he's like, no, I didn't like that one. It's like, okay, so then you just had like a 20-minute dream sequence for no reason? The word fuck or some version of that word is said 102, 112 times in this movie. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd like that. John Carpenter was also offered the opportunity to do a cameo in this film, but turned it down. <laughs> Wisely. <laughs> right, right. And I did, I know we talked about it before, and I did, you know, during the music, obviously, went and checked. 
that the director's cut and the theatrical release, it is like we talked about, that the difference is only about 14 minutes. But almost like pretty much everything that was cut from the theatrical release that was in the director's cut that we saw is about Lori's portrayal um, because the studio thought that it was too um, off-putting, yeah. which is I mean, a nice way I to can say see it. see why they would give that note. Yeah, although I also can see what some other people were saying is that watching it without those scenes gives her a very shallow representation that, like, her character has no she doesn't have any depth she's or any, not being crazy. right yeah. because almost her whole thing was her yelling at people so like yeah. <laughs> there's nothing left when you take that out and then her dying which they also cut out of the theatrical release um so seemed a little odd <laughs> it's just her partying with her friends at the basically the- yeah <laughs> yes so some interesting things about some of the other movies Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers is another Halloween uh, sequel or installment, I guess, of the franchise that is generally panned. Uh, In fact, there are people who work on it who no longer claim any affiliation and pretend they never worked on it at all. But one thing it did have going for it that not a lot of people realize is that actor Paul Rudd was in it. One of his very first roles. He wasn't a huge role, but he is in it. And it was like right before his big breakout in Clueless. So had this film done well, that could have technically been his breakout role, but no, um, it's Clueless forever. Then Danielle Harris, who was in, um, was in this one that yeah. we watched um, and the first Rob, both of Rob Zombie's movies as Annie. She also, I don't know if you knew this, but was in Halloween four and Halloween five, but as a different character. I'm guessing as like a little kid. And she was a little kid. Yeah. She was like nine and 10 when those movies were filmed. She played Michael Myers's niece, Jamie, who was originally supposed to be called Brittany, but they decided to call her Jamie instead to pay honor to um, Jamie, Lee, Jamie Curtis. Lee Curtis, obviously. Yeah. Because she was supposed to be Jamie Strode. So she was like Lori's niece. No. JK, I'm guessing Lori's daughter, because she's, um, I meant to say, Michael Myers' niece. Um, Until the 2018 Halloween remake came out, uh, Danielle Harris and Jamie Lee Curtis were actually tied for having the most appearances in Halloween movies of each having been in four movies before that. And now, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis has been in more. Also, the guy who played, um, now I can't think of his name, who played, because I didn't write it down. It's just I'm adding it to the list. Um, The guy who played Michael Myers in this one was Michael Myers twice, which is, I believe, the most anyone has played Michael Myers. is, And there's only a couple that have done it twice. Are you saying there's some kind of curse of Michael Myers? (laughs) Um, Maybe, maybe. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe it's actors who are like, man, I got like a lead role in this movie. This is going to be my breakout. My entire face is covered the whole time. No one sees you and you don't speak. So (laughs) I don't know that that's going to do for you what you think it will. And while Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, didn't do well at all, as we've talked about before, because it doesn't even have Michael Myers in it, and everyone was like, no, you can't do the Halloween series without Michael Myers in it, the novelization of that movie actually became a bestseller, weirdly <laughs> enough. Yeah, like the the novelization version of Season of the Witch became, like, hit the bestsellers list. <laughs> all right. Good right? For them, I guess. Very random. Okay, and so last thing I have for you, um, I guess I don't have that much trivia today, but last thing I have for you is, um, so John Carpenter has said that he never intended for it to, like, set some kind of rule that with Lori, that the, a young woman has to be a virgin or whatever to survive a horror movie. And basically, his idea was that because Lori was a virgin and just not having like she wasn't spending her time having sex with someone so she wasn't distracted and was more alert to her surroundings and that's why she, which to be honest still sends a message of like sex is dangerous and like <laughs> well, and people that are virgins still think about sex right i know that's a thought i'd had too when i was reading that i was like mm. but it's not that she wouldn't be but i guess it's that if you're in the act and you're 
having it, you know, you're... Uh, Hard to run away from a killer when your pants are around your ankles. Exactly. Exactly. And so I guess that was their idea is that's why she's surviving is all the other teenagers are busy having sex. So she's she's not. So she's OK, which is weird. But then it ended up setting kind of a norm for like slasher yeah, that films. Definitely became a precedent for a lot of movies to use. But yeah, it's not a it's not a thing that's seen as often anymore, I think, in in more contemporary movies, unless they're like making fun of that old or, trope. Yeah, making like a meta statement. Right. Which is which is good. Like they're moving away from that very, yeah, sex shamey to girls and stuff. But yeah, need more sluts. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was an interesting comment that he wasn't trying to start. He just thought it was an interesting way to make his character have a different, you know, set of like where she like what she's doing. And so she's able to do this because she's not partying and stuff with everybody else. But that's about all I have for you today for Sadie's Rabbit Hole. It was a good one. Let's hear that music. Thanks. <sighs> So now that we are out of the rabbit hole, that means it is time to give this movie a rating and an alternate title and kick y'all the hell out of our house. Because <laughs> I'm tired. So what did you rate this movie? For those unfamiliar with how we rate our movies, um, we give them a unit based on the movie itself, and then they're given a one through five rating of how ridiculous and bad it is, basically. So a higher rating is a worse movie. Exactly. Yeah, it's not that we you always say it's a weird way to rate it. I think it makes total sense. Well, then <laughs> give us your well, what we need a unit first, right? Yes, a unit. Yes. Um I ha I wrote down face stumps or dog guts. <laughs> oh, poor Dougie. I know. This series this this franchise of films has killed a lot of dogs along the way. <laughs> <laughs> they can all go to hell. Um, I had shaky camera shots, no. uh, unwashed actors. <laughs> there were a lot of dirty people. And, and uh, bloody gurgles. Oh, uh, bloody gurgles is a good one. Let's do that. Okay. I like that. Because it just makes me want to go. Ugh. Yeah. We try to pick a rating unit that you don't want to have a lot of to help really emphasize the point that the more you have of this, the worse we think it is. All right. So what was your rating? What did you give it? Um, I gave it 3.5 out of 5. You didn't. I did. It's right here on my paper. It's right here on my paper. I literally <laughs> wrote the same <laughs> we thing. We do that a lot for those unfamiliar. We do not talk about our ratings beforehand, but they do match up a lot. Um, it's just, it was way too long. All, like, all the scenes were too long. Like, it tries too hard to be its own thing, but without really having much of anything to say. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. And then it got bonus points for having Weird Al. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like it could have been a better movie if so many choices were made differently. I mean, I guess really what I'm... If they had just done everything differently, it would have like, been great. I guess what I'm thinking more is that like, I know that the base they have of the Halloween franchise and lore the character of Laurie Strode and Michael Myers, like it works. Obviously it's worked for many other movies or even Michael Myers with someone else from his family, you know, um, it's worked before and it can be really good. Well, and the ones that the one that just came out a couple of years ago does like a darker, more grounded kind of take on it and it pulls it off very well. Yeah. I And like a more realistic, you know, tone to it. But yeah, it, uh, this one, I don't know. Yeah, and I really liked the 2018 one, which, by the way, if you have not seen that movie yet, or even if you have and you didn't notice, it is a direct like sequel to the first one and just leaves, omits all the others, 
which I did not know going into it. So when Lori Strode was running around telling everybody that Michael Myers was a serious threat and no one was listening to her. Everyone thought she was bonkers. I was infuriated because I was like, are you kidding me? This guy has been killing people for like eight movies and no one's listening to her still? Like, yeah, it's a very different, which I mean, I know it's stupid because like she died and they killed her off before, but that also I had omitted from my brain, apparently. I assumed in Halloween Resurrection she was coming back because she fell off the building and it showed her, but like. But it didn't really, like it gave an opportunity. It it left it open-ended enough, but yeah, she just was never seen or heard from again. Right. So that's what I thought is that it was just, she came and she's older. And I was so mad that whole movie when everyone would be like, you're just being so dramatic or whatever. Well, I was so like, paranoid. Yeah. how dare you listen to the woman? She's been chased by this guy so many times. But yeah, no, it makes more sense um, once I learned that that's what they were doing. Anyway, sorry, back to what we were doing. So yeah, no, I know that I know that the Halloween like story and stuff can work. So I guess it gets extra points for that just then that they had a good base foundation right. that they I'm, could use I'm in based on the story. Yeah. Right. But I just didn't like what they did with the character. Lori, I didn't like the, he made a Rob zombie movie with Halloween characters. Yes. In it instead of a Halloween movie that had Rob zombie touches to it. Yes. That's, that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it feels like is it felt like watching a Rob zombie movie that happened to have Michael Myers in it. Or someone pretending to be Michael Myers because it wasn't really Michael Myers at the same time. Oh, yes. Um, in the director's cut, that was the one time Michael Myers speaks and says the word die was cut out for the theatrical cut. I, I looked and made sure, I guess, because uh, the studio rightfully thought that people would be angered that the first time ever michael myers speaks and it's just to say die yeah, like give him a good line if you're gonna give him right. one line after nine movies die like come on <laughs> we know he's thinking that he's killing people right he's been thinking that the whole time that's the one thought you we know he has <laughs> like um but yeah so it gets some points for that but yeah i really Especially what they did with the character, Lori. Like, I totally get that she's been through trauma and that that's going to make a person act out and like even in anger and stuff and lash out occasionally. But then don't make the whole movie be her yelling at everyone all the time. And that's her only personality trait. Right. And that being her only like sign we see other than bad nightmares and her just being mean to everybody including fellow survivors and stuff who are taking care of her but yeah it just i didn't yeah i didn't like that me neither all right so you have an alternate title fuck i did i can go first (laughs) um so my alternate title is more in the tradition of halloween in that you know they like to have halloween number colon whatever so this would be halloween 2 the one where you hate everybody (laughs) (laughs) mine is kind of in that vein and i understand that it's not a good title but the pun was too good to pass up so it would be halloween 2 season of the bitch (laughs) I'm getting a disapproving stare, but still a laugh. And so that's kind of what I was going for. <laughs> like, that's terrible, but I respect the, <laughs> the wordplay. I like a good pun. But yes, that was bad. <laughs> okay, well, I don't think I have anything else to say about this yep, movie. That will do it for our October special of Halloween doubleheader that we did. Yes, yes. Come back next week for... Wrong answers only, and check out our Twitter throughout the week for the movie poster for our next movie going up. Yes. And we also, if you have not gotten sick of hearing our voices on our own show, uh, we've been busy the past few weeks doing guest appearances on other people's show. Yes. So we did an episode of The Disc Dump, which I think we mentioned last time, but that one is still available, um, where we talked about 
an episode of the Masters of Horror Collection. With Ethan Embry. <laughs> yes. Uh, we did an episode of uh, the Apocalypse in Review podcast, where they asked us to pick a bad Apocalypse movie, and we found them a Jim really a bad, bad one, one. <laughs> called Impact Event that is probably worse than most of the stuff that we watch on this show, but it wasn't really a horror movie, so we could never do it. Right. But we got to do it anyway. definitely wasn't scary. (laughs) So we ruined two other people's day with it. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, then we also did an episode uh, with our friends over at Four Nerds by Nerds, where we did a deep dive and talked about our favorite and least favorite horror comedies and how horrifying the movie Clue was. Shut up! Um, I used to get scared really easily, okay? People died. People died. They did, and that scared me. (laughs) But yeah, be sure to go check all those out and give those people a like and a listen if you haven't heard of them or want to hear more of us. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, keep your eye on our social media pages to see what uh, next movie will be, and then... Join us next week when we have all of your wrong answers, and we'll hear from Harper again. And hopefully have something a little extra spooky just in time for Halloween. Yes. And a reminder, go vote if you haven't, or if you can, vote early. Or yeah, do, do it. it. Ah, jinx. <laughs> cue, cue, cue the music. Cue, cue, cue the music.